your first example today, I think of the first example, the one about you shouldn't take our word, take his word for it. People are ignorant about their own medical conditions or whatever that that was. That is an example, pretty much a straight head ahead textbook example of what we call unsymbolized thinking. Mm -hmm. And and it has we we have wondered for the last while whether you have this phenomenon of unsymbolized thinking. And we didn't say on day two when it looked like maybe this was going to be unsymbolized thinking. We didn't say, hey, Ryan, that's unsymbolized thinking. Why don't you just call it that? Oh. Instead, what we said was, well, we'll wait and we'll get some examples to that until Ryan says, as he did at the at the beginning day, well, this was like that one over there, which Alec and I have would had reckoned as being unsymbolized thinking. And the guy responded, no, I didn't get an x-ray. And it beeped when I was watching him demonstrate where he hurt his ribs. And I thought, not in words, I just kind of knew it, that like some people may not understand, like they not may not be medically literate. And like, you shouldn't take their word for what they say because- so now I feel, well, I can I can use this word unsymbolized thinking, and it's it's not going to screw Ryan up because Ryan's pretty good at this at this stuff. So what we mean when we say unsymbolized thinking is a pretty clear thought that is, that does not have words and does not have visual imagery and does not have any other symbols, which is why we call it unsymbolized. And yet it's clearly before the footlights of consciousness. This is not just a gist. It, it wasn't like there was some gist that Ryan was saying, well, you know, people don't, people are, are medically illiterate or whatever. This was a specific before the footlights of consciousness experience. And that is what unsymbolized thinking is for us. Unsymb our technical term is it's a, it's a directly experience, quite specific well differentiated before the footlights of consciousness experience interesting and and it generally takes a while for people to become confident of that because people think that all thinking has to be in words and you got to get over that that, that exact example is like the ones that I had trouble explaining because there is it is unsymbolized there's no symbols to actually like refer to or explain so Right. That makes sense. But that, but that doesn't mean that the experience isn't there. So I think you're, you are a pretty much a textbook example of what unsymbolized thinking looks like. Yeah. And, and I'm happy to have this out there on the web so that when people would, would, would say, well, you know, you, you just talk people out of it. You, you, you interviewers, you just, you just tell people that they, that you make a gist, you make out of a gist into something which is actually before the footlights is conscious. Well, this example is going to be good. I can say, well, you know, if you believe that, watch the Ryan videos. It's going to take you six hours, but you can you can watch what happens and you can see that by the time we get to day six, he has on on his own with our with our differentiation maybe, but on his own come to the notion that. What he thought was going to be in words is not always in words, that, that he can think without, he can experience himself as thinking without having words or other symbols involved in it. As I recall, like maybe even on day one, you were describing things like unsymbolized thinking and you were saying like, this is hard to describe because there are no words, but your experience was stubborn. You couldn't say there were words and you stood by that and you were faithful to the experience. And you said, you guys, this is weird for me and confusing and I don't know what to say, but there weren't words here. So I think, it, I mean, a testament to you being open to that, but also like your experience, it is what it is. So to your earlier point about, you know, maybe am I like Lena, but I just interpret it differently. I really doubt that. I think that we don't ask questions about interpretation. We ask questions about reality did this happen and what color was it was it tall was it short you know um interpretations are presuppositions really and and you know how we feel about those so you were saying that i was like strict on the fact that i was having this experience um but someone commented on one of his videos saying that i was trying to uh just prove my point that like i wasn't being honest do you believe that i'm being honest with this experience like, do you have, do you feel like I'm trying to, to skew the narrative of, of this? 
I have not had that impression. I have not had that impression at all. In your face, dude. Um, <laughs> and so, so I'm, I'm all, I, all, I also happily accept the fact that, that that there are people out there who could put one over on me entirely, and I would never know it. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. I don't think it happens very often, but but I don't discount the possibility. And you might be him. Yeah. I would be a sociopath if I could do that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We hope you're not.